No, fruitfulness. Hallelujah. We need to understand fruitfulness. Uh, one is, you know, fruit is in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. Talks about the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, humility, and self-control. But they are not the only fruit. There are so many other fruit that need to be manifested in our lives. And this Jesus is just looking for this type of spiritual fruit. Many people mistake it. Jesus is looking for physical fruit. Jesus does not need your physical fruit. Because physical fruit comes out of the earth. Hello? Every physical fruit that you can give God is out of the earth. Are you with me? And God says... Heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. But the spiritual fruit comes from your heart. He wants that. Hello, are you with me? Many people try to satisfy God with the physical fruits. Earlier when you were all, we were all in the religious thing. You know, you thought Sunday, those days you should put 50 paisa. <laughs> That's one week's... <laughs> One week's thing is over. <laughs> Again, next week, 50 paisa. Huh? Kota. God is, you know, he is a beggar. <laughs> we thought, they come like a begging bowl only. <laughs> Hello? If you go to some trains and all that, you find people coming with a begging bowl. And this man also comes Sunday with a begging bowl. <laughs> Are you with me? God is not a beggar. He is God. He does not want your physical fruit. He wants your spiritual fruit. The fruit that comes from your heart. Which no man can give. Only you can give that. Are you with me? So my dear brothers, let us be fruitful. When I'm talking of fruitful, I'm talking only of spiritual fruitfulness. Hallelujah. And another thing you need to understand. You don't have to be discouraged about the neighbors. Person sitting next to you. Maybe in church. He's got such beautiful uh, uh, praying in tongues and this and that. And you look at him, uh, my neighbors, I want to tell you, you have to grow in spiritual maturity. You plant a plant, a small plant, uh, maybe a mango or whatever it is. It won't yield the next day. It will take time. And in its time, it will yield. And as it matures, it will yield more. Are you with me? So you don't have to look at someone else. God understands your abilities. Because he is the one who has given you the ability. Are you with me? You have no, nothing of your own. So you just have to be faithful. It is that faithfulness because when you look at Matthew 25, the, the, the God is praising a person only because of his faithfulness. Are you, are you with me? Well done, good and faithful servant. He never said anything else. And that faithfulness brought about fruitfulness. That is why I told you earlier, it is only God's work that is the spiritual work of God that can bring about fruitfulness in your life. Hallelujah. So gradually, every tree, you know, it has to mature. That is why again in the book of Hebrews, chapter 5, verse 12 to 13, actually it's a cautioning, it's a word of caution that people are tend to be, you know, usually you find children are more cared for, no? Everything is taken care of. Hello? Small kids, they don't have to look at where their next meal is going to come from. Everything is taken care of. Many Christians are like that. Are you with me? Everything is taken care of. And, and uh, the only thing they do is grumbling. But God says here, though, that is the uh, book of Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12 to 13. It says, for though by this time you ought to be teachers, you ought to be preachers. Hello? You ought to be preachers. I'm just paraphrasing it for the, for the present. It says, by this time, you ought to be teachers. You need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk uh, and not solid food. See, today, people still want to hear messages about healing, <laughs> about deliverance. Are you with me? About prosperity. Those are all things you should have migrated, sort of grown to the next level. Of God has healed me. God has prospered me. For what? When you read the word in the book of Peter, 1 Peter says, by his stripes I am healed. Okay? That is the first level. But why has God healed you? To die to sin and to live for righteousness. That is the next level. 
but people are still want to get stuck in the first level of healed healed healing healing blessing prosperity am i getting across we have to grow spiritually we have to mature only then you will bear fruit otherwise you will be only eating the fruit are you with me you will not be producing any fruit you will be only consuming the fruit hallelujah of someone else's work he says oracles milk and not solid food for everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness for he is a babe but solid food belongs to those who are of full age that is those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil so we have to grow even the messages that we need to hear here should be different it should not be the traditional where you know about healing and when they are and they got this and they got that and you will get this and you will get that that is not what what you need is messages which and which encourage you which exhorts you to please god today a man is looking at what i can get from god are you with me messages of getting from god now today we need to migrate and grow into messages of giving to god are you with me my dear brothers and sisters that is real fruitfulness because you have to glorify god in your fruit you know by believing in him and living a life uh, hallelujah worthy of the call that each one of us have also you need to understand that um, when you read the word in john uh, sorry james 4:8 says very clearly that you draw closer to god and god will grow closer to you because this fruitfulness is again a matter of abiding with god are you with me abiding in close proximity with god so today you your our one of the purpose should be i want to be fruitful and i can be fruitful only when i become closer to god when i am closer to the source of my nourishment are you with me just like the word says that you cannot bear any fruit without me or rather without me you can do nothing so the more you have of jesus the more you can do are you with me without me you can do nothing if that is the equation then the more of jesus you can do more Amen. are you with me my dear brothers and sisters so today our endeavor as a believer must be hallelujah to come closer and closer to jesus to have a more intimate deeper personal loving relationship with jesus that should be our core our purpose are you with me and that way you will need to understand that you will be growing day after day in proportion to your closeness or proximity to the source of jia uh, the blessings that you are going to get or the revelation that you are going to get when you read the word in the book of ephesians chapter 1 verse 17 it says a uh, uh, spirit of wisdom and of revelation of the knowledge of jesus christ the closer you get to that the more and more there will be revelation of jesus are you with me and the more and more you have revelation of jesus one thing that happens is the more and more you will be encouraged to believe in him are you with me the more you believe in him the more will be your fruitfulness are you with me my dear brothers and sisters so this is what a believer uh, a believer should endeavor to have the most important thing is a relationship with jesus and the closer you get the closer you are to the supply of that blessing hallelujah hallelujah again and another thing we need to understand is the other side of it what would happen to you if you are unfruitful because god always gives a very open thing about what would happen if you obey my word what will be the blessing like i told you earlier the love of god is unconditional but the blessings of god are conditional he talks very clearly in no uncertain terms hallelujah what would happen to the person who is not fruitful because you can be fruitful only when you are attached to him when you abide in jesus so if you don't abide in him what would happen to you he says that they would be like what there would be branches which should be cut and thrown into the fire are you with me let's read the word exact word the book of john chapter 15 verse 6 i am the vine you are the branches he who abides in me and i in him bears much fruit for without me you can do nothing if anyone was was 6 if anyone does not abide in me he is cast out as a branch and is withered and they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burnt 
you can understand god is just referring to the fire the hell fire that you will never be useful for the kingdom hallelujah so today you and i need to understand and take a call on this am i am i going to take a decision that i'm going to be fruitful or am i going to take a decision that i'm going to be just sitting idle and just happy that i'm saved hallelujah so this being attached to the wine like it told you it says that you have to have a walk of righteousness a walk worthy of your calling this is the like it told you again and again i don't know some or the other all the talks are coming into that one common theme of what a righteous walk this is what the lord wants a church today a walk of righteousness and when you read the word actually this is a in colossians 1:10 you heard about that you may walk worthy of the lord so you and i have been called by jesus and that calling is because of the blood of the lamb shed at the cross of calvary and again the book of ephesians chapter 4 verse 1 says beseech you to walk worthy of the calling that you and i have a vocation a calling my dear brothers god has called each one of us god has called to be fruitful and you and i must be worthy of that call because jesus shed his blood at the cross of calvary to enable us to come to him and be fruitful and you and i the least we can do is the book of ephesians chapter 4 verse 1 shall i read it huh? book of ephesians chapter 4 verse 1 says I therefore be I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called. See so who has called you Jesus. What has he called you to be heirs of the eternal kingdom? Are you with me? To be heirs of eternal life. So you must walk in a way which would be worthy of the of the blessing that the Lord has kept for you. You cannot be a scoundrel here. and say my inheritance is in heaven so your worthiness for that worthy worthy you have to be worthy that is you should merit it again the book of uh, thessalonians 1 thessalonians chapter 2 verse 12 that you would walk worthy of god who calls you into his own kingdom and glory so god's calling is not just casual God's calling is not something to reward you with something very small. He has called you to reward you with his kingdom and his glory. If that be the case, if that is what God is going to give me, how much I should prepare myself to be eligible for that? How much I must prepare myself to receive that? So there should be a preparedness today my dear brothers and sisters today as a believer what you and i should focus is on the preparedness of, of the second coming of jesus are you with me the preparedness for the second coming of jesus would you and i be qualified to go with him this is a question only you can you and I, you can answer nobody else can answer this is something which you and i need to sit down and and analyze on the basis of the word of god whether when he comes will he take me with him my dear brothers and sisters this is something which you need to sit and seriously meditate on do i qualify there is a calling but did i walk worthy of that calling worthy of the kingdom worthy of the glory that god wants to give me hallelujah then this worthy walk is so important because only this worthy walk in faith will be will make you fruitful for the kingdom of god and this uh, you know we, 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 this is all because of the finished work at the cross of calvary because we know that god draws us to himself are you with me the word of god says in the book of john chapter 6 verse 44 that unless i attract unless i draw no one that the father is saying no one can come to jesus so he, you and i each one of us have been attracted are you with me by the magnet of the love of god are you with me we have been attracted we have been drawn to jesus 
We never did anything. We never ever did anything. But God in His infinite wisdom and the foreknowledge of how you would react to the call has released His grace for you to come to Him. You would never come to God without grace. Hello? Because you have been saved by grace. But the grace comes from God in His foreknowledge, in His great infinite wisdom. He knew before the foundation of the world that how you personally would respond to his call. And therefore, he released his grace for you to come to Jesus and be saved. Are you with me? Hallelujah. And he, after that, he brought about for you to live a righteous life. He brought about the conviction that about sin. When you read the word in the book of John, 16, I think we'll read that. The book of John 16, 7 and 8. He says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is for your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they do not believe in me. Of righteousness because I go to my father and you see me no more. Of judgment because the ruler of the world is judged. These are the revelation knowledges that God gives you. And because he gives you the revelation knowledge of sin. And the consequences of sin. You decide to do a metanoia. Your life is transformed. Are you with me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Again, you need to understand because who were you? Who were you before God touched you? Book of Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 says, you were dead in your trespasses. Hello? You and I have nothing to boast about. Hello? Are you with me? We were dead. Just like the dry bones in the book of Ezekiel chapter 37, you were dead. Hallelujah. But God does not want you to be dead. He gave you his life. When you read the word in the book of Ephesians, Chapter 2, verse 1 says, And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. So he has given us life. Hallelujah. Again, we need to understand that when he gave us that life, what happened to us? We became a new creation. The book of Corinthians, Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says, Whosoever is in Christ Jesus, is a new creation. The old has gone and the new has come. The old man, the flesh man, in the image and nature and likeness of Adam had gone. And the new man, in the image and nature and likeness of Jesus, the second Adam, has come. He has transformed you into a new creation. Hallelujah. For what purpose? The book of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 24 says... And that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. So you walk a walk of righteousness. Walk a walk of holiness. That is why God has called each one of us. My dear brothers and sisters, these are times. These are end times. God is giving each one of us such a great opportunity to come closer to him. Such a great opportunity to decide our priorities. Are you with me? Many of us take Jesus lightly. Just as the word says, when the king invited the people for the wedding feast, very clearly says, they took the invitation lightly. Are you with me? Today it is time, not time, it is high time that we took God's calling seriously. Because he, my dear brother, sister, is coming soon. Let us qualify ourselves. That Paul's, Paul had such great confidence that he has fought a good fight. He has finished his race and he has kept his faith. And there is therefore the crown of righteousness which is kept there by the righteous judge. And not only for him, but for everybody who anxiously waits for the coming of the Lord. Today, are we anxiously waiting? You and I can anxiously wait for the coming only if you are sure of the reward. But if it were 
of judgment, you will never be anxiously waiting. Are you with me? So let us be people who are anxiously waiting. Tr knowing truly well that there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Who walketh not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Let us change, my dear brothers and sisters. It is high time. Let us not be attached to the world. On the contrary, be abiding in Jesus. So that you and I will be more and more fruitful for the kingdom of God. And thereby lead a life pleasing to God. And I will walk worthy of our calling. Amen. Can we stand up? Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you for every word that is spoken to our lives. Yes, Lord, by ourselves we acknowledge we can do nothing, Lord. But we also acknowledge that when we abide in you, we can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens us. God, Lord, give us the ability for this righteous walk. A walk worthy of our calling, Lord. And not only us, but every brother, every sister who will listen to this message at any point of time. Father, we need your grace. We need your mercy. We need your compassion. Open the floodgates of heaven. And cover us with your mercy, your compassion and your grace, Lord. So that we can abide in you and be fruitful for your glory. Father, we make this prayer in the most adorable and precious name of your beloved Son.